everybody! Welcome to another episode of Princeton Review Live. Today we are going to be talking about some common comma problems. And there are so many rules when it comes to using the comma, so many to keep track of. We're only going to be focusing on a few today, but there are a few good ones. So as always, before we get started, grab a pencil, paper, something to write with and write on, and get ready for our warm-up. So we'll have four questions today, and I'm not going to tell you which ones have errors. We're going to come back to this at the end. So write down numbers one through four and decide whether you think each of the following question or sentences is written correctly or not. So our first one, the apple was feeling rotten. It was devastated to the core. I'm not going to say anything else. I'm not giving any hints. You just write down whether you think it's correct or not. And if you think some of these sentences, if you identify one as being incorrect, try to identify the error. And keep in mind, we're talking about commas today. So it's going to have to do with commas. Number two, the kitchen slept on the bed, which was washed last night. Number three, Zahara's best friend, one of Zahara's best friends, Susan, is cooking dinner tonight. And our last one, I don't want pepperoni on my pizza, mom, the child complained. So I'll give you a few more seconds here to take a look, mark, take your notes down, whatever you want to do. And just keep in mind, we are live. So if you're tuning into this live, you can put any questions in the chat box and it'll be displayed and I can answer any questions you have during this episode. So let's go ahead and move on and talk about when do we use a comma. So I'm not going to give you a comprehensive exhaustive list of comma use because it would just take forever and we only have a limited amount of time. So we'll first look at the four comma rules that we're going to go over today and then a few more. So you do want to use a comma when you have unnecessary information. So there will be two commas before and after unnecessary information. We're going to explore that further soon. But let's take a look at the other comma reasons before we get into more detail. So you also want to use a comma before a name or a pronoun when you're using direct address. And again, we'll get into that more in a few minutes. The next reason, before you have an opening quotation mark, those little quotes, and before a closing quotation mark. And then this is the last topic that we're going to explore in depth today before the and or the or in a series of things. And I put sometimes there, you'll find out why later, but there is some disagreement about whether or not that should go there. It's called the serial comma, again, to be continued in a few minutes. So these are the four topics that we're going to be exploring today in terms of comma use. There are so many other reasons to use commas, though. Some of them include when you have two or more coordinate adjectives and when you have a coordinating conjunction not separating two complete ideas. And the list goes on and on and on. If you have dates before the year, you would put the comma. You use it for location, city, comma, state, or city, comma, country, and so on. So again, this is just going to cover the four first um, comma rules that are mentioned up here. Okay, and we'll just briefly talk about a few reasons why we, when we wouldn't want to use a comma. So don't use a comma before the first or after the last item on a list of three or more things. And I'll show an example of that when we get to that part. And you don't want to use a comma if you're separating two complete ideas and you don't have a coordinating conjunction. That would be a comma splice, which we're not going to get into today, but you can see my other video called comma splices. That's also on this playlist if you want to learn more about the comma splice. And just as a general rule of thumb, if you can't think or cite a reason for using a comma, you might not need it. So always check and make sure that you actually need a comma because sometimes we just get a little bit too comma happy and just drop them in randomly. So if you learn the rules of using a comma, you'll be able to use them more accurately. All right. The first one we're getting into today, the first big comma topic, before and after unnecessary information. And we're doing this one first because this one tends to be the most problematic and difficult to understand. So we want to use the commas to set off information that is not essential to the meaning of the sentence. In other words, we don't need it. 
you might have heard this called a non-essential clause. This is the same thing. So if we take a look at this sentence here, the child who got lost in the store has found his mother. Sounds fine, looks fine. You might be thinking to yourself, well, I thought you have to put a comma before who? And that's actually not always correct. And that's where it gets so tricky because sometimes we just don't learn the rules correctly and or we overgeneralize things. So if you're not sure whether to use the commas, especially when you're dealing with the word who, you can ask yourself a few things. So if you delete the stuff in that phrase, so in this case, we have who got lost in the store, right? This is the phrase. If you deleted that, would the sentence still make sense? So the child has found his mother. Grammatically, yeah, that works. The child found his mother, okay. But if you deleted those words, does the meaning change? In this case, yes, it does because we don't know which the child is. We need to specify which child, there's millions of children. So we need to say the child who got lost. It's clarifying something. We're looking at precision here. So we do need that who got lost to convey the correct child. So we would not use commas when we're dealing with that necessary slash essential information. Let's look at another. So everyone who takes Dr. A's class learns to appreciate classical music. This is another who situation. So let's pretend that we don't have who takes Dr. A's class. Okay, if we block that out, so let's literally just take it away here. Boom. It's gone. Everyone learns to appreciate classical music. Again, grammatically, yeah, that works. But that's saying that everyone learns to appreciate classical music. The meaning has changed, right? Because initially it said everyone who takes Dr. A's class. So there's a condition that needs to be met for these people to appreciate classical music. They would have to take this class. So in this case, it is essential information and we want to keep it. So no commas. Let's look at a couple more. I hope to return to the place where I found happiness. So you'll notice a trend here. A lot of the words that throw us off the most with whether or not to use commas, you're gonna see who, where, a lot of those W words. So if I said, I hope to return to the place, do you know where it is that I wanna return? You don't know what place in what context, you really would have no idea. So. If I said the place where I found happiness or where I had an amazing taco, now that's talking about something very specific, not just any random place. No, I haven't given you the name of the place, but I'm giving you more clarifying details. And let's look at one more. <clears throat> so this one, do you like the dress that she bought last week? The word that you wanna pay attention to here is that, <laughs> the word that. So in this case, that she bought last week, you would not use a comma. And as a general rule of thumb, <clears throat> more often than not, you're not gonna put a comma before the that. So do you like the dress comma that she bought last week? <clears throat> you wouldn't do. However, you would say <clears throat> comma which. So which and that are very similar in their meanings, although they're doing different things. So just remember the general rule of thumb, there are exceptions, but more often than not, no comma before that, but put a comma before which, W-H-I-C-H. -H. Okay, and again, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in as we move along here. So that's it for essential, non-essential, or necessary, unnecessary information. And let's move into the next one. So direct address. Now this is a formal way of saying you're addressing somebody, literally directly addressing a person, or it could be a pronoun. Generally, you're gonna see it with a person's name, but in some cases, you'll see certain pronouns that work with this. So, hi, mom. And this is me addressing mom. So I wanna say hi, comma, mom. It's before the person whom I'm addressing. Let's go, comma, everyone. So here's a pronoun, and we put the comma before it. What time should we meet Raj? Can go with the question. It can go at the end of a sentence. Because I'm talking to Raj, I have to put a comma before his name. Giselle, please sit down. 
So now the comma is going after the name. So depending on where you put the direct address in the sentence, it's always going to be offset by commas. And it could even be in the middle of a sentence. So I could say, you know, Matt, that's not a good idea. And I would put a comma before and after it. So the location of the comma, typically it's going to be before, but it can also be after. And it really depends on the relation to the rest of the sentence, where it is in the sentence. And quotation marks, or a little floating kind of comma, flipped over, reverse floating set of two commas, they look like commas. This is not an overarching when to use comma conversation, but you can use comma before quotation marks when you're introducing a quote. Do you always do that? No, I'm not saying that. But there are many situations when you can use a comma. So he said, comma, it's nice to meet you. Okay, so I don't have a complete idea. I couldn't use a colon before the quotation mark if I don't have a complete idea, but I could use a comma with an incomplete sentence coming before it. So there's that one. And then let's look at another one. According to Vonnegut, comma, new knowledge is the most valuable commodity on earth. Now, I do want to call attention in this case, I did not cite. If you were to include an in-text citation, if you're doing APA or MLA writing, you know all about in-text citations, that period would be outside of your, your citation. You would have your parentheses, citation, close parentheses, and the period would be out here. Okay, so that's when we put the comma before the opening quotation mark, but we can also put a comma before the closing quotation mark as long as that quotation mark's not at the very end of the sentence. So take a look here. Miguel emphasized, learn your comma rules as he explained the rules of proper comma use. So you've got several commas happening here. We're introducing a quote here, and then we're putting this comma inside because it's not the end of the sentence. That period's kind of float and just pretend that it's a little bit closer to use, but we have the period, the actual sentence ends here. So that's where that period goes. And then let's take a look at another. It's cold in here, comma, she complained. So this is kind of the reverse of the first example sentence. We have the quote and then a comma, because it's not the end of the sentence. The sentence ends with complain, so that's where we put our period. And you have to be careful because you can't just flip things around. So if you look at this sentence, she complained, comma, that part's good. It's cold in here, comma. We can't end the sentence there. See how that looks funny? We would have to put a period in lieu of that comma that we have in this latter example. All right. So that's our third rule we're exploring today. And we've got one more. And this is the series, or the serial comma, or the Oxford comma, or the really controversial comma. So you want to use a comma before the and or the or whenever you have a series of three or more things, depending on the style of writing that you're using and what your teacher says. So let's take a look. You could say, would you like cherry, comma, lime, comma, or lemon water ice? So that or is the last thing before the last item in that list, lemon. And we can turn that into a statement and say, I like cherry, comma, lime, comma, and lemon water ice. Now, if you've written for some MLA styles and certain things, you might have been told, don't put that comma before the end. And if you're watching this and thinking about the ACT or SAT, the answer is you want to put the comma before the end and a list of three or more things on both of those tests. So keep that in mind, but know that it's not always going to be your teacher's favorite way, depending on that particular person. So there are debates. And here's an example of why some of those debates exist. So if I wrote, I dedicate this book to my parents, Emily Dickinson and John Steinbeck. Well, you could technically interpret that as me saying that my parents are Miss Emily and Mr. John. Despite the fact that they did not live at the same time period, one might be confused and think, wait a second, that's kind of confusing. So if I were to name my parents and pick two people who are both living today and that weren't really true, it could be confusing. 
So the argument is that this serial comma avoids any kind of confusion. So now if I say I dedicate the book to my parents, comma, Emily Dickinson, comma, and John Steinbeck, now it's clear that I have three distinct items and they're not related in any way. So at the end of the day, ask your teacher or consult whatever styling guide you're using, whether it's MLA, APA, Chicago, Turavian, whatever it might be, just check the rules in that particular book and the most updated version of it to make sure that you're using the right variation of whether or not you should use this comma and make sure to use the comma before that last item in a list of three or more things for the ACT and SAT. That's a mouthful. So the English language is a lot of fun because there's so many different controversial debates about these kind of things. And as long as you conform to the rules of the style or your teacher, you'll be okay. All right, so again, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them in. And we're just gonna go over a few more examples here before we go back to the warm up that we saw in the beginning. So first one here, number one. I'm gonna say, which variation would we use? So, will you please call me Ashley? Will you please call me Ashley? Which one of them is correct? Take a moment to think about this. In this situation, they're both actually correct, but depending on what meaning you're trying to convey, they mean different things. If I said the first variation, will you please call me Ashley? I'm asking you to call me Ashley. But if I'm talking to you and you're Ashley and I want you to call me, I would have to say, we're going to say they're going to sound the same, but I have to use the second variation. Will you please call me comma Ashley? Because this is our, if you remember, direct address. So you can see how the comma, lack thereof, can literally change the meaning of a sentence. So just be really careful. Let's look at another one. So number two. Andy, who practices yoga daily, is studying medicine. What are we dealing with? Which of the four things we talked about today is at play here? So we see that there are two commas. We see that word who. So we need to ask ourselves, well, is it necessary or not? Who practices yoga daily? Do we need that context? In this case, the answer is no. The fact that Andy practices yoga daily is great, it's a nice detail, but it's not essential to the meaning of the sentence. The sentence is about Andy is studying medicine, and it just so happens that she also practices yoga daily. So we would not need the <laughs> we would not need the information, so we do need the commas. So for this one, A is gonna be the correct one. And let's look at another who situation. So all my friends who live in Florida have swimming pools. So in this case, we're wondering who live in Florida. Is that essential information or not? Well, this is another sort of a trick question and it really depends. So if all my friends, every single one of them lives in Florida, one of these variations would imply that. So if I said B, all my friends, if it happened to be a passing detail that they just all live in Florida, then we could not include that information. But if I have friends all over the country and the world, all my friends who live in Florida, that here is essential. Because it's not saying that all my friends have swimming pools, right? If we deleted that, that means something different. That would mean every single one of my friends ever has a swimming pool versus those who live in Florida. So to recap, all my friends who live in Florida is essential information if I have friends who live outside of Florida and don't have swimming pools. And in that case, we would not use commas because it would be considered essential. Okay, and one last one here. So I'd like a salad, he said, or he said I'd like a salad. So we'll take a moment here. Which of these two is correct? You see the order of things is switching up, but so is something else. And in this case, there is a clear answer. In this case, the answer has to be A. I'd like a salad, comma, he said. 
So if you look at choice B, there's nothing before the quotation mark, and we need to introduce that quote with some kind of a punctuation. So A has to be correct. All right. So now we're ready to go back and check out those questions that we saw at the beginning today. So number one, the apple was feeling rotten. It was devastated to the core. Is that correct or incorrect? So this one is not okay. There's a problem. It's called a comma splice. We can't just put a comma and no conjunction. We could use a period or a semicolon, or we could change up the wording. There are different ways to fix number one, but we can't just have a complete sentence, the apple was feeling rotten. That can stand on its own. Followed by another complete sentence, it was devastated to the core. So just be very careful with that. Number two, the kitten slept on the bed, which was washed last night. Is that correct? This one is correct. We have a comma, which, and it's clear what everything's referring to. The witch is referring to that bed, not the kitten. We didn't wash the kitten last night. So number two is okay. And then number three, one of Zahira's best friends, Susan, is cooking dinner tonight. So this is a tricky one. Do we need Susan or can we delete it? Well, if we delete it, it just says one of Zahara's best friends is cooking dinner tonight, but we don't know who that person is. So we would wanna keep the name for clarification purposes. In that case, we would not wanna use the commas because it's essential information. Otherwise, it could be any of Zahara's best friends. And the last one here, I don't want pepperoni on my pizza mom, the child complained. So you might notice that there's a comma here inside of your quotation marks and that one's fine. And you possibly could use an explanation point depending on the emotion that you wanted to convey in that sentence, but a comma's okay. There's something missing though. And this is the direct address situation. So we would want to put a comma between pizza and mom because the child is talking to his or her mom. So this one is incorrect as it is. Otherwise, pizza mom. Well, we're not talking about a pizza mom, saying pizza mom. So that is it for today. And now you can see how really subtle changes or deletions of commas can change the meaning of your sentences. So thank you all for tuning in. If you have any last questions, now is the time to ask. If not, I will see you all next time. Thank you all.